Well, good morning. It's Mr. Tim here on a fine Sunday afternoon here in Yorktown, Virginia. And uh, it was last Sunday that churches uh, around the world, of course, celebrated Easter. And Jesus condemned to die on a cross, wrongfully accused that the scriptures would be fulfilled. Jesus freely went to the cross and gave up his life so that we who rightly deserve to die for our sin would be set free. Sin forgiven in Jesus, the death penalty paid in full by Jesus Christ on that cross as he shed his blood and died for you and me. Hebrews writer chapter 12 verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Well, Jesus certainly endured the suffering of the cross. He died a death that we deserved. And yet the scriptures tell us that he did it for the joy that was set before him. Well, my brethren, what joy could there be in suffering, in pain, and death? Well, to understand that, we need to look back at the final moments of Jesus' life, looking to John's Gospel account, chapter 19, starting verse 28, says, After this, Jesus, knowing all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. He bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. It is finished. The work that God the Father had sent Jesus to do was completed at that moment. Well, what works were completed, my brethren? Well, we can look to uh, 1 John, letter chapter 3, verse 8. John says, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. See, the scripture says that Satan is the, the devil, of course, is the father of lies. The Jesus came to destroy Satan's lies. Jesus exposed his lies. John's Gospel account, chapter 1, verse 17 says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. Satan's lies kept us bound in sin. Jesus sets us free by bringing forth grace and truth. We are saved from sin, forgiven by grace. We certainly don't earn salvation and we certainly don't deserve it, my brethren. But God gives this to us anyway because of his grace and his mercy by faith in Jesus Christ. We are saved by grace through faith, the scripture saith. The Jesus cuts through the lies of Satan's deception by bringing forth truth. And our relationship to God that was broken by sin, restored now by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus saith unto him, when Jesus was speaking to Thomas, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. You find that in John's Gospel account, chapter 14, verse 6. We have forgiveness of sin in Jesus. Jesus paid our sin debt on the cross. And the Apostle Paul writes this. He says in Galatians chapter 1, starting in verse 4, he says, Who, speaking of Jesus, gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. According to the will of God and our Father, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. See, Jesus willingly and freely gave up his life for our sin to pay our sin penalty, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. See, the scripture calls Satan the uh, ruler of this world. And uh, scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, it says, Paul writes, and no more marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel 
of light. Angel of light, he's Satan is not light, but he transforms himself in deception as an angel of light. Now Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting verse 3, he says, But if our gospel, which is the good news of Jesus Christ, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, again speaking of Satan, he's not really God, they use a small g here, uh, but it says the God of this world has blinded the minds of them who should not believe, if not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. See, Satan is the, called the ruler of this world only because God has allowed it so right now. And Satan blinds the minds of unbelievers by posing as an angel of light. Satan, Satan actually keeps people in darkness but poses as his angel of light. Jesus brings the true light and exposes Satan's true self. He exposes Satan's deception. Satan brings darkness. Jesus brings light, my brethren. And we preach the glorious gospel of the light found in Jesus Christ. We preach Jesus Christ as Lord. See, Jesus is the true king who brings this kingdom of light to deliver us from this present evil world. We enter Jesus' true kingdom by faith in him. Sin forgiven, as we've mentioned, my brethren, can never say this enough. Sin forgiven, death, the death penalty paid in full by Jesus on the cross. When we enter Jesus' kingdom, we are delivered from this present evil world of Satan. And that's why Jesus' final words before giving up his life would be, it is finished. Well, Matthew's Gospel account, chapter 27, verse 51, tells us something else that happened when Jesus died. It says this, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. See, the veil in the temple that separated us from God was torn in two. The veil that separated the most holy place that only the high priest could go once a year behind to offer a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. That veil was a separation. Now it's torn in two. The way of, of grace, the way of access to God's throne of grace is now given. Uh, the finished work on the cross by Jesus gives us access to God's holy throne of grace. Once separated because of our sin, the veil now torn in two, which gives us access because our sin has been forgiven and the penalty paid. It is finished. The works of the devil, destroyed. We are delivered from this present evil world. The joy that set before him, Jesus, and therefore Jesus endured the cross, knowing it all was finished, the work had been done. Well, my brethren, if the work of Jesus was finished at the cross when he died, why on Easter then do we celebrate Jesus' resurrection? We saw in Hebrews 12, 2, it said Jesus endured the suffering of the cross for the joy set before him. The saving work on the cross was finished, but Hebrews 12, 2 says, also says Jesus then sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Well, in order to sit down at the right hand of the throne of God, Jesus must have risen. The works of Jesus finished at the cross, but he must not only have died, but he must be risen as well to sit at the right hand of the throne of God. The Apostle Paul speaks about this in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 13, when he says, but, he says, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is also in vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. Well, if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. And if this, in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are most men, most miserable. What Paul is saying here is this. If Jesus has not been risen, 
then he's not who he said he was. Now Jesus did not fulfill the scriptures. He would not have been faithful and true. But see, the confirmation of who Jesus is, who he said he was, came by the resurrection. See, the resur without the resurrection, our preaching and faith is in vain. We are saved by grace through faith. If Jesus had not risen, then he was not faithful. And if he was not faithful, we would still be stuck in our sin. We'd be false witnesses, and our faith would be in vain. Well, my brethren, praise God that Jesus' work was finished at the cross, but the confirmation came by the resurrection of Jesus. See, if Jesus had not risen, then his earthly mes message of hope would have fallen on deaf ears. See, after Jesus had risen, he appeared to his disciples. We found this in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, starting in verse 44, says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the Scriptures. He said unto them, Thus be written, and thus be behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins would be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things. He opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. This happened at the resurrection when he appeared to them. And Luke then writes about Jesus' disciples in Acts chapter 10, verse 39. Starting there, he says, uh, he says about the disciples, We are witnesses of all things, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all people, but to witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be judge of quick and the dead. To him all the prophets witness through his name. Whoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. The risen Lord Jesus. Confirmation of who Jesus is. What he has done for us. He died for us freely. But he rose again, my brethren. And Jesus commanded them to preach unto the gospel. And see, Paul writes about the importance of the preacher in his letter to the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 13, starting there. He says, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then he says, how then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him on whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear? Without a preacher. See, my brethren, without the resurrection, the disciples wouldn't have understood all these things. And how would they be preaching, preaching repentance and remission of sins had taken place? How would it have taken place? And how would the people have believed in Jesus without hearing from the preacher? Paul writes 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting at verse 20 there, he says, But now is Christ risen from the dead, become the first fruits of them that slept, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterwards they that are in Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, and he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule, all authority, and power. For he must reign. So he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that should be destroyed is death. See, one man, Adam, sinned, and therefore, because sin entered the world, all of us have the sin nature. Sin brings death, so that in Adam all die. See, Jesus bore our sin, paid the penalty, but he also rose. Because Jesus rose again, we by faith in Jesus Christ rise up again to a new life in him. Our old life bound to sin, dead and gone, we are reborn to a new life 
set in righteousness. Our old relationship, once broken because of sin, now restored in Jesus, because in Him, we are made right with God the Father. See, Jesus spoke about this to Nicodemus in John's Gospel account recorded there, chapter 3, starting verse 5. He says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. See, brother, all of us are born once in the flesh, but in order to be reborn in the spirit comes by faith in Jesus Christ. That's where the new life comes in. That's where at the resurrection Jesus rose. That's where we rise up to new life in Jesus. Jesus rise, rose, we rise up to a new life where God's Holy Spirit is then given to us to help us live this life, this Christian life, to help us walk this road of life. The Holy Spirit points us to Jesus as we commit to following where Jesus is going. We enter God's kingdom where Jesus Christ is our King. Then cometh the end, when he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule, all authority and power, for he must reign, Jesus must, till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy destroyed is death. Jesus completed the work of God the Father had given him at the cross. Jesus' final words for he gave up his spirit. It is finished, my brother, it is finished. Jesus now seated at the right hand of the throne of God the Father. The work of Jesus finished, but his message of hope continues. For those by faith in Jesus, our old life bound to sin, dead and gone. As Jesus rose, we were reborn to a new life in righteousness. Oh, my brother, and at Easter, we celebrate the risen Lord, the confirmation of the saving work Jesus had done. And we celebrate this new life that we have in Jesus Christ, a life of righteousness restored to God that comes by faith in Jesus Christ. Well, amen. Have a blessed day in the Lord. God bless, we'll talk soon. Amen.